Ladies, ladies and gentlemen, hosting the 87th AAU Sullivan Award Ceremony is Ellie LaForce, lead sideline reporter for the SEC and NCAA college basketball, as well as host of We Need to Talk, a sports talk show on CBS Sports. Ellie LaForce. Hello, everyone. Welcome into this incredible event. Is everyone having a good time? It sounds like it by the round of applause. Good. How lucky are we? This award has been presented since 1930. It's been going on longer than the Heisman, longer than most award shows that we hear about all the time. Award shows that celebrate so many great athletes. And, you know, we all love sports, right? I work in sports and when people ask me if I like what I do, I say it beats working. And I, I think a lot of us in this room could agree with that. We are so fortunate to be here, and all because of these athletes right over here, these incredible human beings who are at the elite <laughs> peak of their profession. So AAU has been a part of my entire life. Just to give you a little bit of background, I played AAU basketball um, as early as I possibly could and as long as I could before uh, walking on the basketball team at Ohio University. And I went there to play basketball, and I came out a journalist, if that tells you anything about my game. <laughs> certainly didn't make it to the level of these incredible athletes, um, but I certainly tried. How many people in this room have tried to make it in sports before moving on to something else in their career? Raise your hand. There's a lot of us, only a few made it to this level. Um, but I, I want everybody just to participate in this quick drill that I learned when I was playing on an AAU team, one of my first years playing AAU basketball. Raise your hand in the air if you don't mind. This is so corny, right? It's like you're going back to kids camp. Raise it a little bit higher. A little bit higher. One more time. Now raise your hand as high as you possibly can. And then a little bit more. <laughs> See what I mean? So we, we all thought our hand was raised as high as we possibly could. But really, we could climb up on that chair. I mean, knowing how competitive these athletes are, I'm surprised that you guys weren't doing it. We could climb up on the bar, we could hang from the lamp, we could always go higher. These athletes are at the peak of their game, but what we can all learn from being in the same room with them is they're never going to stop, they're always going to keep going, there is no peak for them. And isn't that what we all wake up every single morning and try to be and try to do in life, the best that we can be at what we do? Not only because it's fulfilling for us, but because it makes everybody around us better too. And I think that's one thing AAU sports really shows you is you don't, you're not just limited to your community or your high school team or you know, your college team, but you're, you're with the most elite athletes in your area. So you're always pushed to go harder. That was my favorite lesson from college basketball was right when you thought you couldn't run one more sprint or do one more layup or push up or whatever it was, the girl next to you is or the man next to you is. And it shows you that your body gives up a lot, as you guys know, faster than your mind does. And when you train your mind that you can do something, you can accomplish so many great things. So thank you for inspiring us all. It's going to be an incredible night of celebrating you and your success. And we're so excited to be here. And we hope everybody just has a blast. So we're going to open it up as we would at any sporting event with the national anthem. And uh, our singer tonight is Eileen Reed. <laughs> Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watched. Or so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled banner yet wave? Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you so much.
much, Eileen. So next up, I'm going to introduce the president and the CEO. Many of you already know who he is, but I wanted to share a quick story about him as he just, his, his passion just bleeds through him, the passion he has for, for sports and for athletes. And he's lived it his entire life. And just getting to speak with him briefly, he shared some really tremendous stories with me, which we don't have time for all of them, but he's a fellow Ohioan. And um, he grew up playing sports his whole life, tried a little bit of everything, even played college football with Nick Saban at Kent State many years ago. Moved on to become a coach, and I asked him how many sports he's coached. He said, all of them, really. And he wasn't joking. He really has coached just about every sport, but he was coaching football at Warrensville Heights. And he started the first ever African-American gymnastics team there. He had preschool, training and events, during school, after school. He really just is so passionate about, about giving opportunity to young athletes. So, uh, you know, that's the biggest compliment I can possibly give you is that when you meet you, you just know in a second your passion and your love for the sports. And we thank you for everything that you have done, uh, specifically for AAU. So let's welcome to the stage with a big round of applause, Dr. Roger Gowdy. Welcome. What a great turnout tonight. We moved this back to the middle of the week. We found out New Yorkers don't come back into town on the weekends. We were running this on the weekend, and we moved it back, and what a great response we got. So thank you all for coming. But first, before I start my comments, I'd like to bring Allie back up. And she was an AAU member when she, in her youth, so we thought it would be appropriate to get her an AAU membership so she's officially up here. In case she falls and breaks a leg, she's insured. <laughs> So she is now an AAU member again, but I just found out she's moving to Toronto. So I don't know if we can sign up. I gotta to talk to my registration chairman if we're allowed to sign up Canadian athletes. <laughs> but, but anyway, thanks for all for coming. Um, I, I want to introduce uh, some people today, um, but before that we have uh, some people here from the New York Athletic Club. Our relationship with the NIAC has, has been great. I've been coming to this award for about 25 years. And we've moved it from different places, from Indianapolis where we had it in a banquet format. We moved it to Orlando for a couple of years. But the best place it's always been is the birthplace of where AAU was founded. If you don't know this, and you probably heard, a lot of you heard this speech from me before, the AAU was formed by athletic clubs around the country. James E. Sullivan was the guy that came up with the idea, said you have all these athletic clubs in New York, Cleveland, San Francisco, LA, but they're all competing internally. We need a union of amateur athletics. So ergo, he formed in 1888, James E. Sullivan, who was a New York Athletic Club member, he formed the Amateur Athletic Union. We've been around since then. And uh, what a lot of people don't know is um, in 1978, we, up, up until that point in time, before Congress passed what was called the Stevens Act or the Amateur Sports Act, up until that time, we picked most of the Olymp Olympic athletes. Well, along came the Amateur Sports Act, said you can't be the national governing body for all 41 sports, you can pick one. Well, we chose not to pick one, and one by one our sport committees went off and formed USA Swimming and USA Boxing, and back then it was called TAC, the Athletic Congress, which is now called USA Track and Field. Well, as each sport committee left, they took their money with them. So a few people in this room that I'm going to be recognizing later just stayed around and said, you know what, we weren't doing this for the Olympic movement anyway. We stayed back and we worked on the base of the pyramid. We rebuilt the base of the pyramid back up to a point where 20 years ago, along comes a company called the Walt Disney World Company. They said, we're building a, a, a facility down in Florida and we're looking for anchor tenants. They had the Atlanta Braves already signed, and so they looked at us as being the second anchor tenant. So they built, at that time, called Disney's Wide World of Sports. And how many people in here remember ABC Wide World of Sports? Raise your hand. What was it, the thrill of victory and? <laughs> and what happened in the last slide? Who could ever forget the guy going off the ski jump? <laughs> the guy falling down and flying off the ski jump. But uh, so we, we formed this relationship 20 years ago with Disney. And, and lo and behold, our profile went back up. And a lot of people said, AAU went out of business. Well, we never went out of business. We focused on the, the athlete, the base of the pyramid. 
Well, what we discovered was by getting the base of the pyramid and all these kids coming through our program, over 700,000 athletes and 150,000 volunteers now, we discovered the peak of the pyramid comes back. And uh, in my sport, which happens to be volleyball, we started a, a, a championship down in Orlando that had 123 teams my first year, 20 years ago. And five years ago, we, we uh, set the Guinness's book of world records with 1,738 teams. Last year, we had 2,334 teams. And so we're just growing like crazy. And last year at our national championship, that's at least in volleyball, we had nine of the top 10 teams in the country. So by, by maintaining the base and uh, providing good quality programs for athletes all over the country and around the world, we in turn have done what everybody else is trying to do. We brought the, the great athletes back again. And some of these kids did compete AAU, some of them didn't, but they're phenomenal. What, what a class we have this year. It's just unbelievable. I mean, it's a who's who in America there. And then, uh, it's a, uh. so I better stay on task because I, people say, get going, get going here, you talk forever. Um, it, it's my honor at this time uh, to welcome to the stage the uh, James Rafferty, president of the New York Athletic Club, uh, and share some of his welcoming, welcoming comments. James? Thank you, Dr. Gowdy. Good evening. You know, we learn something every day, I think, and uh, I think a lot of our members didn't realize that James E. Sullivan in 1888 was a member of the New York Athletic Club. I didn't know. But the club was founded 20 years earlier in 1868. We're in our 149th year. Next year will be our 150th. And to this day, our mission statement remains to promote sports, exercise, and physical fitness. And it'll continue, and we're proud of that. We're also very proud to host, again, once again, the annual, the annual AU Sullivan Award. We have a long history as hosts, but also many of our fine athletes over the years have been nominated for the award, and six have actually won. If I could name just two, uh, Horace Ashenfelder, 65 years ago, 1952, was the winner of the uh, A.U. Sullivan Award. He doesn't look far from here. He's, an, he's 95 years young, but he wasn't able to make it, but he sends his regards to the nominees. Also, Bruce Baumgartner, A.U. Sullivan Award winner, 1995, uh, also Olympic uh, champion. Uh, Horace Ashenfelder was the Olympic gold medalist in Helsinki. Bruce Bumgarner, Olympic gold in LA in, in 1984, and also Barcelona in 1992 in wrestling. I'm also honored tonight to sit next to one of my boyhood heroes, the 1966 AU Sullivan Award winner, Mr. Jim Ryan. Thank you. I'd like to offer my congratulations to all the nominees. Enjoy the evening, thank you. Well, I have the dubious distinction to recognize all those folks in attendance that are important for the AAU. So I'm gonna bore you for a few minutes here, but these people, without these folks, we wouldn't have 700,000 athletes. Without these folks, we wouldn't have 150,000 volunteers across the country. So bear with me for a few seconds as I introduce some of these folks. And uh, first, the other four national officers with me, Mr. Rusty Buchanan and his lovely wife, the first vice president. Our, our second vice president, Mr. Matt Williams, was unable to make it tonight, but he's uh, called and sh uh, shared his uh, hope that all goes well, and he's excited about this, as all of us are. Our national treasure, treasurer, Mr. Joe Mirza, and his lovely wife. <laughs> and our national secretary, uh, Cindy Trombley Martin. And I'm going to do this group in one fell swoop because it would take forever if I didn't. At this point in time, I'd like to ask uh, all AAU Board of Director members, AAU Governors, District Leaders, and AAU Sullivan Committee members in attendance to please stand. I, I can't see you all, but I'm telling you, that's just a small part of our organization, but they do so much. Without them and without their support, I couldn't do what I'm doing with this organization. We couldn't do what we're doing with this organization. These are just great people that give selflessly of themselves and go out there every day and do good things for kids. 
Um, I also have to recognize some people that are uh, generous supporters of ours. Uh, Diane George, Middle Atlantic AAU, for your generous contribution. Jim Foy, oh, go on, sorry. Jim Foy of Foy Insurance uh, for his generous contribution. New York Metropolitan Governor a AAU, Jim Fox. Connecticut AAU District Governor, Jack Bethke. Monica, Monica McCabe um, and is the great niece of James E. Sullivan. Where's Monica at? And last, but by no means least, I'd like to recognize some of our corporate partners. And I, I, I don't even like to call them sponsors because in our, our relationship with these groups is we're partners. We're all in with them and they're all in with us. Those are the kind of companies we want to work with because we want people that are passionate about what they do, that are willing to think of creative ways that we can grow our organization and for us to think of creative ways where we could help their organization. Uh, those people would be David Lindquist from Gatorade. David? Okay. David Cordini and Jonathan Hovis from Spalding. Dennis Wright and Brian Taylor from Nationwide Insurance. Matt Steffi and Brandon Holloman from Blue Star Sports. Ken West and uh, VJ Tallwar from East Bay. And at this point in time, I'd like to in, in, uh, bring up to the stage the presenting sponsor for the award this year, the president and CEO of Foot Locker Corporation, which owns East Bay, Mr. Dick Johnson. So Ellie had a nice little digital thing. I'm an old school guy, so I still have paper. But, uh, I want to uh, say good evening and, and thank you for the warm welcome, Dr. Gowdy. You know, I, I really am pleased to be here tonight to celebrate the prestigious 87th AAU Sullivan Award and speak about the wonderful partnership that we've enjoyed with the AAU and our East Bay brand through the years. East Bay has been part of the Foot Locker family since 1997. I'm sure not many of you in the room know, but uh, I have a soft spot in my heart for this particular division, East Bay, as that's where I started my career in this industry back in 1993. So uh, East Bay and athletics go hand in hand. Since East Bay was founded in 1980, we've strived to be the ultimate resource for athletes, from providing the latest product and gear to offering expert training advice to meet the athletic needs of all of our sports enthusiasts. We're a company deeply rooted in youth athletics. Our mission is to serve the dedicated, the driven, the focused, the amateur and the elite, on and off the field, every day and everywhere they live. It's not surprising that one of our key sponsorships and partnerships is with the Amateur Athletic Union an organization that shares our deep commitment to athletics with its philosophy of sports for all, forever. This vision is shared by nearly 700,000 participants and supported by more than 150,000 volunteers. Now that's impressive. The community of AAU members and clubs has become an important part of our customer base for both EastBay.com and our EastBay team sales effort. We are proud of the many initiatives we have been a part of with the AAU over the years, from providing exclusive offerings to support membership registration, to being the official AAU apparel store, to activating joint promotions through our online team stores, to supporting many of the AAU's national championships. We are especially proud to be the presenting sponsor of tonight's event and announce our extended commitment over the next five years. It is so rewarding to be part of a program that showcases and celebrates the nation's best amateur athletes, right up here in front, and honors the incredible contributions and accomplishments of outstanding athletes and individuals across a myriad of sports. We, as a company and our supporters, are truly inspired by these exceptional athletes and are humbled to be here tonight to witness one of the finalists join the illustrious ranks of the impressive previous winners. On behalf of East Bay, I'd like to personally thank the AAU for its unwavering support 
as we continue our mission to serve athletes of all ages and performance levels. Best of luck to all of tonight's finalists. Please enjoy the evening. Thank you all very much. I said I asked somebody what's PPT stand for on my note cards here. I guess it's a PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so that shows my age, I guess. Uh, but anyway, so the, the lights are supposed to fade to blue, and I guess I'm supposed to introduce the PowerPoint presentation at this time for the Gussie Award? There it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Throughout our history, there have been athletes who have been trailblazers in amateur sports. Men and women, people of diverse ethnicity and race, whose passion for sport and competition overcame any obstacles they faced. And now, the Amateur Athletic Union will salute these athletes with a new award. It is named for a pioneer in sports, Miss Gussie Crawford, who was voted the first female president of the Amateur Athletic Union in 1988. The AAU's Gussie Crawford Award recognizes those athletes whose efforts, both on and off their playing surface, on the national or international stage, have paved the way for great change in amateur sports. The 2017 winner of the Gussie Crawford Award is Jesse Owens. He was the son of a sharecropper yet he achieved what no Olympian before him had accomplished. An Ohio native, he showed early athletic promise. While competing for Ohio State University, he tied one world record and broke three others. Jesse Owens competed with the American team in the 1936 Olympics held in Nazi Germany. Hitler believed that the games would support his belief of the dominance of the German Aryan people. Jesse Owens had different plans, as he became the first American track and field athlete to win four gold medals in a single Olympiad. His performance has made him one of the most well-known athletes in Olympic history. Owen's triumphs as a world-class athlete and record holder were the prelude to a career devoted to helping others. His work with young athletes, as an unofficial ambassador overseas, and a spokesman for freedom are a rich legacy to his fellow Americans. The 2017 Gussie Crawford Award winner, Jesse Owens. The AAU started this award, this is the first of annual award, and in the purpose, the reason we started this award, so you have some semblance of why we're doing this, we're looking back at all, in, in our headquarters, we have all of the past winners of the Sullivan Award. And I, and I happened to see the movie Race, uh, which is about Jesse Owens, and I went back to 1936 and looked and saw, saw who won it, but it wasn't Jesse Owens, and I'm thinking, how could we possibly have you know, a guy that won four gold medals under those, you know, that kind of duress and wasn't recognized. Well, we didn't have a mechanism to go back in time. So I came up with the concept and our board of directors approved it of having an award that would kind of go back in time and we could right any wrongs that happened. And we thought what fitting, what more fitting a person to start this award with would be Jesse Owens. And what more fitting a person to name this award after would be Gussie Crawford, who is, she smashed the glass ceilings years ago and continues to do that. I mean, she's, she's not only the, uh, she's the first, but the only female president of the AAU since uh, 1888. Uh, she's been actively engaged in her community. As a matter of fact, two years ago, she ran for city council. So she's still involved and still smashing glass ceilings. But more importantly, I think, she epitomizes what this award's about. It's about fairness. It's about looking at the body of work of an individual, regardless of race, creed, or color, and saying, you know what? This person deserves to be recognized. And, and at this point in time, I'd like to bring up to the stage uh, Miss Gussie Crawford.
had knee replacement surgery two months ago, so I'm a little bit wobbly. Hey, Roger, you want me to talk? <laughs> like what? <laughs> I wasn't supposed to have to talk, okay? But I can, if we bring up Gina, then I can go on. Uh, we can do that. We can make, we can make that happen. Okay, like because I happen. met Gina, and I was delighted. I've waited so long to meet Jessie's grandmother, and if you'll bring her up, I'll talk to her a minute. But not Gina, about me. Gina so if you, Hemphill Strayhorn. Right. And I can't say her last name. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but it's Gina Hemphill Strachan. And she's Jesse Owen's granddaughter from California. I've been waiting a long time to meet Gina, and the first thing I ask her, and this has nothing to do with sports, but I think it's very, very important it is to me anyway. I said, what kind of a grandpa was he? And she said, wonderful. And I hope there's a lot of grandparents out there that believe that's as important as the sports. Absolutely. Right? Got it? Got it? It's heavy, Gina. Okay. I'll handle it. <laughs> Thank you so much. May have been ignored for a long time, but he's back up there now. And Absolutely. your foundation has done a wonderful thing Thank for Thank you him. so much. And we've come a long way. Yes, we have. Long way to go. <laughs> okay, go ahead and speak. Thank you. I don't know where to put it. Thank you. Yeah, don't drop it. Specs on. I'm old school too, so I've got paper here. Uh, thank you, and good evening, everyone. Thank you to Dr. Gowdy, to Gussie, to um, Melissa, and to uh, all of the distinguished, amazing athletes over here, and all the distinguished guests. Thank you so much. And um, I am honored on behalf of my family to be here. And I want to thank you for this great and quite frankly long overdue recognition. Um, Dr. Gowdy mentioned it, but you know, uh, for, for, for us, it's um, when you think back to 1936, certainly an era of more exclusion than inclusion. And I think that the most outstanding, decorated American athlete um, went overlooked as the recipient of the Sullivan Award. And my grandfather, she talked about, you know, what kind of grandpa he was, and he was certainly a great grandpa who um, was loved being with his family. He loved traveling, he loved speaking, but he was a man who never searched for recognition. It just wasn't who he was. It wasn't in his spirit, it wasn't in his heart, it wasn't his purpose. However, the lack of recognition for this particular award, it didn't make him angry, but it actually saddened him until the day he died. And I think, I don't know why, perhaps because of everything that he had to go through and, and be at, in the Olympic Games and the time and the era. But it's one thing not to be recognized by your country, but it's another thing not to be recognized for the color of your skin, but it's another thing not to be recognized for your contribution. And he, his contribution, not just on the athletic field, but off to this country was Incredible. However, it's a testament to the changes of growth and is a testament to the changes of progress that I'm able to stand here tonight and accept this award on behalf of my grandfather. It celebrates so much more than just his remarkable athletic um, accomplishments, but it celebrates the impact that he made as a man in this world. You know, my grandfather, I often show stories. People ask me, you know, what was he like? 
you know, did you have a chance to get to know him? And I went to college in Arizona at ASU, and at the time, they had moved to Phoenix, and um, because he wasn't sick sick at the time, they were living in Chicago, but they wanted to move to Phoenix to really kind of live that retired life. And um, I went to ASU, and everywhere we went, if we went out to dinner, if we were at a basketball game, wherever, there was always somebody who recognized him and had a Jesse on story, even to this day. I was on vacation in Cancun with my family, and we were sitting and talking, and somebody came up, and we were talking, and somehow or another, my granddad's name came up, and this guy shared the story. Oh my God, my grandfather met your grandfather, and he told this whole elaborate story. So everybody had a Jesse on story, and it went to it. It went to the fact of how humble he was. He never got through a meal without somebody coming and saying, Mr. Owens, can I take a picture? Mr. Owens, can I have an autograph? Mr. Owens, can I tell you a story? And for me, for the athletes of today, I think it's important that they hear those stories and that they understand the importance and the impact that they have, not just on their sports and their communities, but on this world. And it is important to keep those things close to your heart and stay focused as well and keep them close to your, just keep them close and remember them. Um, he was an amazing athlete and an even more amazing man. Hardworking, dedicated, loyal, trustworthy, all of those things and grateful for all the opportunities afforded him. And through his life, he used that power of sport to motivate to inspire, to encourage, especially young people. And it is really with a great sense of pride that our, fa our family, to our family, that his legacy, 81 years later, 81 years later, is still relevant. That his legacy is still relevant and that he continues to inspire peaceful, people across the globe to stand in their power, to be a contribution to their communities and to achieve their best always, no matter what that takes. So on behalf of my grandfather, may he rest in eternal peace, and the entire Owens family, it is with great pride that I stand here with gratitude and respect and accept this award, and I thank you. Thank you very much. I'll say this, if you haven't seen the movie Race, it's probably on whatever Netflix, whatever now, you should, you should watch the movie. It's truly inspiring. And uh, I, I learned from Gina that her mother, who's portrayed in the movie, and her two, uh, the two sisters are all still alive and living in Chicago. So that's pretty impressive lineage there. And, and Gina, thank you for coming and sharing your comments with us today. Uh, at this point in time, I'd like to welcome back to the stage our MC, Allie LaForce. We're just passing the baton because I'm only up here to introduce Melissa, but I'll make a first comment, uh, comment first. Uh, Gina, thank you so much for, for sharing your grandfather's story and thank you so much to your family for carrying on his name and legacy and Gussie for everything that you've done for women. Uh, I've been fortunate enough at CBS that they have been very welcoming to, um, to hiring women to serve in roles that traditionally women don't. And we created the first ever national all-female sports show called We Need to Talk. And it's been going a couple years now, maybe three. I'm losing track. But one of the women on the show is Amy Trask. And she it was the first and only ever female CEO of an NFL team. Another member is Lisa Leslie. She was the first woman to dunk in a basketball game. And uh, I was with Lisa today and, and Allie, and uh, Lori got to meet her and hang out with her a little bit, and it was hysterical because they took a picture with Lisa in between them. <laughs> and the height difference was just a, little, just a little bit. But what Amy Trask always told us, which I thought was outstanding, is she just said, hire the best person for the job. Hire the most qualified person, and that's all we could ever ask. And I believe that everyone in this room truly feels that way. 
that the most elite athlete or the most qualified person should be rewarded and honored. And so it's great that we all share that sentiment in this room. So with that being said, I welcome to the stage Melissa Willis, AAU Sullivan Chair, another outstanding female in the room tonight. About 25 years ago, I sat and reflected um, on where I wanted to go in the future, and I wrote a personal mission statement. And the personal mission statement, I repeat to myself every morning, and it has always stayed the same, and I've always embraced it and embodied it. And it's my mission is to challenge, motivate, and inspire. Challenge people to new ways of thinking, motivate them to take action, and inspire them to reach heights they never thought possible and to surround myself with people who share the same mission. Today it's amazing that we are surrounded by people who continually challenge, motivate, and inspire us. From Gussie and her story, to Gina and the story of Jesse Owens, and yes, I was one of those when I met uh, Gina a couple of months ago when I came out here and we had dinner, I was the first one to say, my granddad's claim to fame was that he went to high school with your granddad. And they both went to high school together um, in Ohio. So uh, yes, I know she hears that all the time, but it was a very special connection um, for me as well. But I wanted to thank all of you who have shared and embodied that same mission. How many of you, by a show of hands, have, are a coach or have been a coach at one point? Thank you for challenging my daughters. A special shout out to my husband who's a high school coach. He's been a high school coach for uh, close to 30 years. I tell everybody I have three daughters and 51 sons. Um, but to all of the coaches out there who have challenged not only my children, but who have challenged uh, the children of the world. Um, all of the parents. How many of you are parents of, of some of these athletes? Or parents of, first of all, parents of our athletes um, who are here on this, uh, with us today, please stand up. Parents and families. Special thank you to all of you for, for motivating your children who have then inspired us all um, in this room. And a special thank you to uh, Dr. Gowdy and to the Amateur Athletic Union who truly have challenged, motivated, and inspired all of us to carry on the mission of the AAU and to continually inspire us to reach heights that we never thought possible. Now this is about the athletes and what I'd like to do is share a little bit of uh, history through the video of the AAU James E. Sullivan Award. Welcome to the New York Athletic Club and the 77th Annual James E. Sullivan Awards celebrating sports at its purest level. These awards have been presented annually by the Amateur Athletic Union since 1930. We have world champions here tonight. We have Olympic champions here tonight. We have world record holders. Well, tonight it's perfect. We have athletes who in just about every case have done things that we've never seen before. This is a wonderful moment for, for all of you. It's not just what you've done in your athletic arenas, it's, it's the things we hear about you away from that arena. I think the special thing about the AAU James E. Sullivan Award is that it represents all sports. Some awards, like the Eisman Trophy, represent the sport of football, but the Sullivan, in fact, represents the Amateur Athlete of the Year covering all sports. It's been around for 80 plus years and we've had some remarkable winners. Look at all the past winners and uh, just to think that I'm in the same class as those athletes and uh, just the people that I was running against. And, uh, those, those athletes, they just have accomplished so much. I mean, people winning Heismans, um, multiple gold medalists, and, and to be a part of that group is just phenomenal. As an athlete, we put in so much work every day towards a goal years down the line, 
and to be recognized and have everyone come together for something like this is really special. Your last two years have been some of the most historic in gymnastics history. Will you talk a little about what you've done the last two years? Um, I'm a two-time world champion and I'm a six-time world medalist. I feel like amateur athletes put so much hard work into what they do and their sport and everything goes on behind the scenes so one gets to really see it and I feel like this is one of the awards that really recognizes that hard work. You know you hear about athletes all the time you know doing great things on the field and um, the cool thing about people that I've got to meet here is what they do off the field. You know it takes their sport you know into consideration but also you know how they live their life which is very important. It really is about you know the character and um, the striving and the, and the effort and, and the moments that get you to, to be the best athlete but also be the best version of yourself and I think that's what we respect so much about amateur athletics. They all have the same values of the commitment to excellence of their sport, their drive, their discipline. That's what this award represents. It represents integrity, it represents passion, it represents um, being true to your ideals. I think honoring just the raw athlete as what they were before all the fame and the money and everything I think is really special. And what a better way than to be in the venue like the New York Athletic Club that is just the epitome of amateur sport. Thank you to New York Athletic Club. I am a member and a world champ for you guys, so it feels good every time to come back to the AC. The New York City Athletic Club is a historical prominence in the field of amateur sports. Along with the AAU, who was founded out of the New York City Athletic Club, I think we are out there and we represent those values, ideals, and dreams that kids have of being the best you can be in the field of amateur sports. You know, it's a huge honor for for us that are really working hard that, you know, maybe don't get the support that, you know, the professional athletes do. You know, we put our heart and soul into what we do every day and so to, to have people see that is, is really huge for us. I think it's really great to recognize uh, am amateur athletes and everything that the AAU does uh, to promote amateur athletics. And I think that that's one thing that the AAU does very well is they consider athletes in such a wide variety of sports and, and they bring recognition to sports that maybe wouldn't have necessarily had that spotlight shined on them. Our mission says sports for all forever. This truly uh, accentuates what we're about as an organization. That sports for all forever and we want to recognize all those people that have achieved greatness in amateur sport. This will have an incredible impact on my sport because uh, again it shows that you're never too old to strive for something. You're never too old to have goals out there and you will have a chance to be recognized and that's what we all look for. People don't remember titles that you've won three years down the road. What people remember is your character, your passion, your heart, everything that the Sullivan Award defines. The qualities that you learn as an athlete are so important um, and so to be a part of this group is really an honor for us. Regardless of the sport, we want to recognize all of those athletes and they're truly all winners just being here today. I am an amateur athlete in, in its purest form and, and I perform because I love it. here for that video. That's a <laughs> One of the things we're challenging with and we're wrestling with like the rest of the world is is defining what an amateur is. Our world is ever changing and we have a uh, AAU now has a committee in place that is going to evaluate and look at what define amateurism because it's such a changing world and uh, it's it's a tough tough question but we truly have the best amateurs in the world here today with us, and we're getting there. We're going to be announcing it soon. You don't care about any of this stuff. You just want to know who won. <laughs> so, so we will get there. But I, one more person, I, I'm really grateful uh, to uh, one of our AAU members who approached me at our convention this year, Jacques Raphael from our Florida district. And he said, you know, would you, wouldn't it be great to have Jim Ryan come speak at our Sullivan Award? I said, if we could get him, it would be great. He goes, well, I know him. And so, lo and behold, 
He contacted him, we connected, and uh, Jim uh, was gracious enough uh, this morning to speak to the athletes at a breakfast we had, and he's gonna come up here to say a few words to you today. Uh, the great uh, first time uh, uh, sub four minute miler from uh, Rock Chalk Jayhawks, uh, Kansas, Mr. Jim Ryan. I want to start a little bit where Dr. Gowdy mentioned earlier, Wide World of Sports in Orlando. Uh, I, I'm of that generation, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And I know some of you can identify with that. Well, I'll identify with it in another way, too. You saw these great high-definition pictures. Often I speak, and when I do, I show my world record at the AAU Championships in 1967. It's old, it's grainy, and people look at it and say, how old are you? <laughs> so yes, I'm, I'm dated at 50 years ago. Uh, I had the privilege of winning the AAU Sullivan Award, uh, and it still remains one of my treasured trophies at home uh, for many reasons. One in particular is that it honors the athlete, but most of all, it honors the high moral character, the contributions that they've made and will continue to make. I had the privilege this morning of speaking to the athletes and some of the families, and I mentioned to them the fourth recipient was Glenn Cunningham. Uh, Glenn was a man who has a child in Elkhart, Kansas, uh, in a one-room schoolhouse. A fire started when he was with his brother. His brother was killed. He was severely burned. He had to overcome a lot of handicaps. One was being able to walk. His father put him behind a mule. He learned to walk that way. Eventually, he chased rabbits. And eventually, became a world record holder in the mile. And eventually, won the Sullivan Award way back in 1933. And I highlighted him because he's a man who had tremendous fame, but no fortune. You know, that's in the days when the amateur was truly an amateur. But Glenn wanted to do something, contribute something larger than life. One of my favorite passages is, no greater love has this than one would lay down his life for his friend. Glenn Cunningham did that because through the years, without the advantage of worldwide exposure to help raise money, he fostered, if you will, 10,000 underprivileged children at the Glenn Cunningham <coughs> Youth Ranch. And so he took that opportunity, characterized by what happens with the Sullivan Award, great moral character, and he chose to invest it in the next generation. And so my challenge this morning to these finalists who, in my opinion, there will be someone that will win, but they're all winners, have a great platform. And the challenge to them was take that platform, use it for good, use it to help others. And I thank you for letting me be here tonight. God bless you all. so much, Jim. All right, so we're getting closer to naming our winner and handing out the prestigious award. But first, we're going to take a look back on the incredible highlights that we've watched from these athletes over the last year. of applause and welcome our seven finalists up to the stage where they will receive their medal. Come on up.
So now we have this unique opportunity to hear from the athletes. And um, as I call them up one by one and, and we do a quick Q&A, their sports credentials will be listed on the big screen. So we're going to skip all of that. We're going to get to really know these athletes as much as we can in a one to two minute interview and just see some of their personality because they have personality. Let me tell you, I only got to meet a few of them today. I'm, I'm looking forward to getting to know the rest of you. But um, let's go in order. And uh, let's start with you, Lauren. She said, oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, just come Sharing. on up. Okay. Or we could do a. Oh. Yeah, we could do that. All right. Hello. No. Look, she knows what to Hello? do already. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, you know, when you look at all your incredible credentials, um, the one that's she goes, oh wow. <laughs> the one that stands out to me is for four years you were all Big Ten. It was the first time in program history that's ever happened. When, yeah. when you went to college to play, is that something you knew you could accomplish or set out to do or something that surprised you? Um, I think it's something that I don't know if I had it in the front of my mind when I got there. I just wanted to be the best I possibly could for my team and for that university. Um, but when you're trying to be the best you can every day um, for the people around you, that stuff just kind of comes and it's just an extra benefit. So not much I can say beyond that. At Ohio University, the volleyball team was always the most fun. Mm -hmm. Would you also claim that about? Um, I am not going to comment on that with my coach in the front row, <laughs> but um, I'd say we're up there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I heard you could complete a Sudoku puzzle. Oh, yeah. The difficult level in six minutes. Is this yes. true? Yes. And I'm more like you. I like to look at my screen. So I'm not <laughs> sure with the book how quick I could be, but on my phone, I got that. Six minutes flat. You have too much downtime. Enroll her in more classes. <laughs> you should have done. <laughs> So when you were growing up, who were some of the athletes that you really looked up to that inspired you in your sport? Um, Alicia Glass, she played at Penn State, just an amazing setter, um, undefeated in her um, university time, which I thought was just amazing. Um, people like Michael Phelps, um, a lot of other athletes from different sports, just being the best they possibly could at their specific sport and excelling at the highest level possible. Who pushed you in your family? Ooh. Honestly, my parents, I mean, they just really pushed me to be the best I possibly could, and they're the ones who drove me to practices every day and never complained about it. Um, even when I wanted to go in and get that extra time and extra work, they said, okay, let's go. Um, and they were always willing to do that, so thanks, guys. <laughs> Shout out to the parents. That's right. I'm getting confused about your personality because okay. I'm reading that someone could pay you $20 million and you still would not go skydiving. No. However, if you were not a volleyball player, you'd be a drag racer. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm good on the ground, like straight ahead, but like falling from like thousands of feet doesn't sound that fun to me at all. <laughs> so yeah, drag racing, it's from that movie right on track. I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, it's on Disney, but um, <laughs> I'm all over the place, yeah. So drag racing for sure is my backup. I can see why the volleyball team is the most fun on campus, that's for sure. Well, congratulations again, and thanks, thanks. for hanging out. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Kayla, come on up. Go, Kayla. Go, Kayla. So first of all, I have to give a big shout out to your boyfriend who's in the room. One year anniversary yesterday. Hi, babe. You, you can hold this. Hi, Kiwi. That's my pet name for him. <laughs> Don't be embarrassed. It's fine. These are my friends. He was helping me practice a jujitsu because I was thinking, how in the world did you find a man who was not so intimidated by you that he would be he willing to man. date you? But you guys He's do dating something. me for a year. He's a confident man. <laughs> Most and you, of them don't last a week. You guys do, you know, similar things. You compete in similar ways. Correct. So kind of explain the difference between what you do and how it feels so, the competition well, in your relationship. Well, first of all, judo is an Olympic sport, so it's better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> still love you, though. Um, Jiu-jitsu and judo are very similar. They're, I call them, like, sister sports. So judo is sort of the, the focus is on throwing. And, uh, and you can choke an armbar, but mainly, like, everyone gets super excited about slamming someone on the mat. And in jiu-jitsu, it's more focused on the ground. So they do arm bars and chokes and ankle locks and knee bars and wrist things and ankle hooks and all kinds of stuff I don't know anything about. But he, uh, he loves it. And I, he's actually a white belt in judo now. He has started. And I told him a black belt is a white belt who never quit. <laughs> That's awesome. He's so embarrassing. He's not red at all, no. That's his natural color. 
If we had more cameras, we'd get a big close-up shot of your face right now. He's ready. Babe, now. stand up. Come on. Come Everyone on. loves Let's you. <laughs> So George Strait, huh? One yeah. of your favorite artists? Oh, absolutely. Favorite George Strait song? We have a George Strait fan over here. George! <laughs> I love you, George. Um, favorite George Strait song? Um, Cross My Heart. Okay. I cross my heart. I won't Sing put it, you through that pain. I'll stop. <laughs> so I noticed time. you made it on the stage safely, and I heard a story that you had this massive fear of walking onto the stage and not tripping, but that fear actually became a reality. Yeah. Story. So. Tell that story. I do a lot of motivational speaking and public speaking, and I've been doing it since 2012, so it's not like it's fresh or anything, but I think like two, three weeks ago, I was giving a speech um, in Florida, and I don't know, I was tired. I ha they made me wear heels. A lot of times, like when I give a speech, I'm like, hey, by the way, I have Team USA gear. It makes me look like a superhero. That way, I don't have to wear heels, but this one, I had to wear heels, and as I was walking up on the stage, one of my biggest fears happened, I fell, and I was like, Oh, and then but I got up there. I went, walked up to the mic, and I was like, "Well, that's an icebreaker." And then I was like, "The good news is I learned how to fall for a living, so it's fine." <laughs> and then that's I brought so someone up on stage, and I threw them, and they forgot about the fall. So that's awesome. What a great story. Now you're not nervous anymore, right? No. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, with my fall, locker I here, we, I think we could get everybody some comfortable sneakers, so that would never happen, right? I noticed that you had that. And by the way, I'm holding paper, not an iPad, for all the jokes about me. Using it's the latest. In technology paper, though. Like, oh, yeah, that looks the, the special printing. It's that's presented by East Bay paper. So, so fancy. <laughs> Thank you so much Thank for you. your entertainment. Thank you so much. If you, if you will, just pass the mic along. Like I said, this group has no personality. <laughs> hey, Lori, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good. So, what's been the highlight of this trip to New York for you? Ooh, well, we got to see the Empire State Building today, and we went pretty high up and that makes me want to go skydiving. I would go skydiving for no money, so I'm just saying. <laughs> when you look around and you, you look down your row and you see all these incredible athletes that you get to experience this trip with, like what goes through your mind when you just look around? It truly blows my mind because a year ago it was, it was like making sure that I could do the best of my abilities in my sport and so being able to achieve all my accomplishments as a gymnast and as an athlete and being in a room where all these athletes have achieved their goals and they're striving for more, it's an honor. Okay, so you're afraid of spiders, right? But you can go flying through midair, you know, when you release and you're not nervous at all. But if a spider comes along, you freak out. Explain that. You couldn't that. give me 20,000 to be in a room with one spider, but you could pay <laughs> me nothing to go skydiving, so. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. I don't like um, spiders. You, you've achieved so much at such a young age. Uh, you know, it's something that every parent dreams of for their child, for sure. But what people don't realize is that none of this came easy. And so, was there a moment where you thought I couldn't do it, or that you wanted to give up, or you thought maybe it's not worth it? And what got you through? There definitely was, I mean, there is the year of 2014, where in January I had fractured my growth plate. And then, finally, I came back, and I thought, like, you know, it's my chance to come back and, you know, revive myself. And um, in June of 2014, I was doing a skill and I dislocated my knee and had to get surgery. And so I was basically out for the rest of the uh, year and for that meet season. And that was really discouraging because I was watching my teammates and I, I wanted the best for them. And I was watching them compete and I was sitting on the side and just kind of longing to be out there. But instead, I was on the couch trying to rest and make sure that I get better. But it was really my family who helped me get out of that. and. Um, they reminded me that, you know, whatever you do, we support you, but we believe in you to come back even stronger. And that gave me the motivation to come back. Well, congrats on all your success, and thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Hey, Ashley, how are you? Hi, I'm good. How are you? So how, how does one get into water polo? Let's start there. So how we got into water polo was I have four siblings and my mom would go to work every day and she was completely terrified that we would all drown in our <laughs> pool every day so she got us into a swim program she taught us how to swim and that swim program just happened to have water polo so we loved it compared to swimming and it was like our reward for swimming every day so yeah we stuck with it. Were there a lot of people that you could turn to to look up to in the sport or was it pretty unfamiliar for you because it's not it's not like basketball football baseball which we hear about every day well as an athlete I've always looked up to my teammates I've looked to them to challenge me to teach me new things to 
just helped me grow as a player. So I've always looked up to the people I've been playing with, like the people who are closest to me to get better as an athlete and to look to what I could do as an athlete in the sport. And so what would you tell young athletes that were looking up to you? I would say that the biggest part of my journey has been to just have fun with the sport, not take it too seriously because I've seen a lot of people just not love their sport anymore because they've been like working so hard to do this one thing. You just enjoy the sport and if you work hard and you know what you want to do, everything will come. Like It'll all come. Just remember to have fun with it. Amen to that. Would you go skydiving for $20 million? I'd do it for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Thanks Thank for you. your time. Hey, Allie. Hi. I'm terrified of heights, but I would do it for $20 million. <laughs> I okay. hate heights. I'm glad we cleared that up, but somebody will do it for a dollar now, so the $20 million's off the table. Yeah, Wait, what did you free. say? If someone put you in a room and they got, gave you $20,000, you wouldn't be in a room of spiders? For $20,000? <laughs> I feel like you would. And I feel like if someone really offered you $20 million, you would do it. <laughs> Think about how much money that is. <laughs> yeah. You can just, like, fall asleep while you're flying. <laughs> Allie, <wait. laughs> when you hear that you're one of the most decorated gymnasts in U.S. history. I mean, is that, can you even take that in right now? Like at this point in no. your career, like do you, ever, do you ever try to reflect or do you just say, I'm gonna keep pushing myself and reflect later in life? I do, I mean, I used to watch uh, the 1996 Olympic gymnastics team with my mom who's here tonight. Uh, we would watch, um, you know, the girls and Shannon Miller who has, um, she's the most decorated gymnast and so to be able to I mean, it's just, it's really crazy. It doesn't feel real at all, but I feel like it sinks in a little bit more this time around than it did four years ago, but I don't really think it ever will. The older you get? Yeah, the older I get, since I'm considered You're such a veteran. for gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> With this group, you are, I mean, yeah. for the most part. Yeah, am I the oldest one here? No. Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> Please. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So what, when Ashley was saying, you know, you have to have fun out there. And when it mm -hmm. seems like it's too much or you're being pushed too far, um, which you've all had those moments, how do you get through it? And what, what's gotten you, what, what advice have you gotten from your family or friends and who's mentored you? Well, I think, you know, without the support of my parents, I would never be able to be where I am today. I think it's really important that you have that balance where when you're home, your parents are there supporting you. Like when I got home from practice, my mom and dad were never asking me, you know, how many beam routines did you do? How's your gymnastics going? It was always just, I was just a regular, you know, part of my family. I'm one of four kids. And so, and then my coaches would obviously, you know, push me and push me. And um, it was kind of like both of them did their job. It's the coach's job to push the athletes and it's the parent's job to be supportive supportive and to be loving no matter what and I think having that was so important because if my parents pushed me I just I wouldn't have survived because it's such a it's such a hard sport gymnastics is one of those you tune in once every four years to watch um, you know at the Olympics but in between you know people don't see all the hard work everything that goes into it and you know at the Olympics or world championships it is a team sport but the majority of the time it is individuals so you need your teammates to to you know to get along and to have that camaraderie otherwise it's not fun you have to enjoy it congratulations good luck tonight thank you all right kyle how's it going you're representing for all the guys out there I'm trying to <laughs> okay so you weren't happy today until you got your two chipotle burritos is that right i eat at chipotle <laughs> probably five out of seven days of the week. So. <laughs> Most of my meals, a college kid, you know, 13 bucks, two burrito bowls, it's not a bad deal. So eat there a lot. <laughs> That's so fantastic. First of all, your mom came all the way from Maryland. Yeah. I'd like to give there. some love for your mama. Yeah, for sure. She's Thank getting it on video much. too, so make it good. <laughs> Another really interesting note that you shared is he's a world-class ping pong player. So, I, this, I, is, this is what he told someone else in the room. And then I when I went to confirm that he was world-class, he said. I self-proclaimed <laughs> world-class ping pong player, but I've never met anyone who could beat me. So okay. if there's anybody in the audience who thinks so, 
Uh, there's probably, there's like a room for everything in this hotel. So there's got to be a ping pong table somewhere. <laughs> so if wrestling and ping pong weren't your sports, what would you pick? If I couldn't wrestle, uh, ping pong's not really my sport, but if I couldn't wrestle, <laughs> I'd probably want to play basketball. What? Yes. Yeah, I've my... never met a wrestler who can shoot a basketball with correctly. That's why I'd want to play it. Better at it. Give me your mic. Let me yeah. see the form here. I don't believe you. Can I see your best shot? This suit's so tight. I can't. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> I can't even try. Didn't even yeah. make it to the follow through. Yeah, we uh, we'll work on it later. Yes, okay. For, for young athletes out there who want to accomplish what you did, especially at the young age that you've accomplished all these amazing things, the youngest U.S. Olympic wrestling champion ever at 20 years old. I mean, that's... Thanks. Thank you. What would your advice be to them? Yeah, my advice would just be, uh, like everyone said, you know, make sure, make sure you're having fun. And I think the best way to do that is by valuing the correct things. You know, um, winning and accolades, all that stuff you can't really control. But if you, if you find value in your work ethic and your, in your positivity and how offensive you can be, uh, how well you can perform in whatever you do, then uh, it's a lot easier for me to have fun. It's a lot easier for me to actually like my training and be motivated to come in and practice. So that's the thing I would say to kids. Just value, value the correct things. And if someone tells you it's all about the winning, then just tell them that they're wrong and move on. Well, you've been fun to watch, so thank you. And good thank luck. You. Yeah. <laughs> Last but not least, Jenny, this is the one you should all be afraid of. Our rifle shooter over here. I'm five foot one. How could you be afraid of me? <laughs> but she did give me a little hint earlier that she can only shoot if you're standing still. So the goal is to just be moving at all times when <laughs> hanging out with her. <laughs> so I'd love if you just shared with everyone the story of how you first got into shooting. And uh, it was just four years ago, and it took a little convincing for Grandpa to take you out. <laughs> Definitely. So my grandpa owns a farm in Pennsylvania, and he took me hunting. And it was kind of a family experience with my dad, and I have two older brothers. And hunting is a little bit boring. Don't tell my grandpa. But it's really boring. You can say it. OK. You yeah. get up at 4 AM. You sit still for hours on hours, waiting for a deer to walk by. It's super boring. In the cold where you are. Most In the cold, exactly. But I really enjoyed pulling the trigger. And the next year, I went to high school. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I enjoyed pulling the trigger. And the next year, I went to high school. And my high school actually had a varsity air rifle team. So just like basketball and football, there was an air rifle team. You could earn a letterman's jacket and everything. So I started shooting there. And then I joined a travel team as well. And I got recruited to go play at West Virginia. What's so unique about what she does is the competition field is so small. So I'm curious how you approach that as an athlete. I mean, you really get to know the people you're competing against. Are there mind games? Do you scout them out? Do you <laughs> follow them throughout the year? How does that work? I try to just focus on myself and controlling what I can control, but it's great because it's such a small community and everyone's working so hard towards the same thing. So in the college circuit and the international circuit, you really get to know your competitors. She's so intelligent. She's a biochemical engineer major. Biomedical. Biomedical. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no, I got there. I thought you said biochemical. Either way, it's equally <laughs> impressive. Biomedical engineer at West Virginia. How do you balance being elite at what you do, studying what you study, and also being a normal person at the same time? I don't sleep. OK. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, you definitely have to find balance. And I have a great support team at West Virginia and with my family and everything, helping me to, to balance that life. Well, congratulations. Good luck. Let's give it up one more Thank time you. for our seven finalists. Okay, so as some of them mentioned, they got to do a tour of the Empire State Building today, and we have a little video to show you the highlights from that event. Let's take a look. exciting to be a finalist for the AAU Sullivan Award. It feels great to be in New York City. This is my first time in New York City, so I'm trying to see as much as I possibly can. The 
This is my first time to the Empire State Building and it's amazing. I used to be afraid of heights, not as much so more, so it's really nice to be able to see the city. I'm very much looking forward to the AAU Sullivan Award tonight. I'm honored to be a finalist with six other amazing finalists. All right, making the most out of their trip to New York City. Dr. Gowdy and Melissa, it's, it's the moment we've all been waiting for. It's time to announce the winner. So let's bring you back up to the stage and find out who won. Bore you with one quick thing here. Just want to, uh, over the uh, history of the award, you saw them all posted out there. We've had 34 track and field winners, 10 swimmers, eight football players, six basketball players, four figure skaters, three gymnasts, three speed skaters, three divers, three wrestlers, two oarsmen, two golfers, one Paralympian, one ultra marathoner, and one baseball player, and one tennis player. So you can see it's a pretty diverse group, and uh, it, it really accentuates the beauty of this award. Uh, the first, I, I wanna give one more round of applause to this. I've been coming to this for 25 plus years and I, I don't think we've ever had this strong a class of uh, finalists. It, it started out with over 50 plus people, it was narrowed down to the finalists and we had tremendous response on our public voting and our board of directors and Sullivan committee and the media and the former past winners. We had a tremendous response this year so thank you all that participated in the voting process. But now's the time and Melissa's here, can we have the trophy please? Okay, and I have the envelope here. And without further ado, the winner of our 87th annual AAU James E. Sullivan Award is Lauren Carlini. Volleyball. <laughs> Congratulations, Lauren Carlini. Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I didn't prepare a speech. Um, wow. Well, first off, I just wanna say thank you to everyone. Um, I know a lot of that support came from Wisconsin and my family and all my friends at home for voting, um, so that's amazing. And I'm honored to be a part of this group. I mean, uh, just getting to talk to every one of them, I, everyone knows them as amazing athletes, but they're even more amazing people. Um, off the field, off the court, um, off the mat. So seriously, thank you guys so much. You guys are an amazing group and amazing people. Um, and honored to be the first volleyball player um, to win this award. Yeah. Um, so um, I just, I hope that this starts gaining popularity for the sport um, and as Roger knows, um, volleyball is growing and uh, gaining popularity, so just hope this kind of keeps it going, and um, I hope in three years that I get what every single one of these guys have, uh, an Olympic gold medal. So thank you so much, and thank you guys as well. Uh, I want to thank Allie LaForce. What a great job she did for us. And Melissa Willis, our Sullivan Chair, and all the AAU staff that helped with Melissa with this. Let's give them a round of applause. I believe now it's time for pictures. Okay, I guess now we have time for pictures and the athletes will be milling around. We're gonna take one group picture up here, I guess, and then you'll have ch a chance to talk to the athletes, take pictures with the athletes. So families, come on, you know, we'll get, we've get, got plenty of time to get pictures with everybody. 
Thank you all for coming. It's been a great award ceremony this year. Thank you.